I bought some new T72s and I had somebody a while back ask how I did my camo scheme and I thought well you know since I have to paint these I'll go ahead and do a little thing here about how I did it. So the first thing is you need to uh, base them or prime them after you get the tank together and this is the paint I was using and it's the sand color and as you can see here here's the model painted with that sand color. And what I like about that one, it's primer and a paint in one. So I can do it in one step. I don't have to prime and then paint that base color. So it's all one shot there, which I really like. Then I get out the silly putty and I putty up the tank. And as you can see here, here it is puttied up. Now here's some key things to think about when you do silly putty. I've heard people use the blue tack or whatever that poster putty. Um, I heard the poster putty doesn't as well. It kind of can start curling up and you won't get as crisp edges. Silly Putty seems to work and I bought this over a year ago and it still works. So you put the Silly Putty on and you want to do kind of thin pieces of the Silly Putty. If you do real blobby pieces, those blobby pieces will start settling down and oozing out, I want to say, and the spaces between your Silly Putty will start getting narrower and narrower. So use uh, thin pieces of silly putty, put it on there, and also you have to think the opposite of what you're thinking, at least I did, is put the silly putty on the places you do not want paint. So looking at this, the brown part is not going to be painted. The original base color shows where this is going to, this new paint's going to go. So I get the silly putty on there, and then I use this spray paint, and this one is called I think it's Adobe. Yeah, it's Adobe. And so then I spray the Adobe on, and here's what the tank looks like with the Silly Putty and Adobe on. And what's nice about the Silly Putty is, even though you spray it and you take it off, you can reuse it. So I've, like I said, I've had the same Silly Putty for a year, and I'm still able to use it. It's drying out a little bit, so eventually I'm gonna have to get some more, but it's lasted over a year. So you wait till it dries, you take Silly Putty off, and here's what the results you've got. So I got the two-tone. This originally was where I was going to stop. But I thought, uh, you know what, it's just got to, it needs more color to it. So then I went and looked, and I found this paint, and this one is called Espresso. And I said, okay, I'm going to use that. So I Silly Puttyed up the tank again, again, thin pieces. And what I do is I go over where I put that um, Adobe color, the second color. I go over that and a little bit further out. And so now you can see where that sand color's at is where this new Espresso color is going to go. Spray it, and it turns out like this. Wait for it to dry, and you take it off, and this is the result you get. And I was really happy with this. Okay, cool. And then I went and played a game on a desert um, board. And it turns out that sand color is just too bright. I mean, it just, it's like, wow, it's like safety orange on that board. I mean, it just really stands out. And that's something I didn't want. So I looked online and asked online, and people said, use shading. So I did that, and I used a sepia shade you see here. I put it over the tank, wiped it on, you know, brushed it on everything, let it dry, and this is how it turned out. And I was really happy with it. I'm really happy with the results. It blends those colors in very nicely. It settles down that sand color so it's not so bright on a sand table or a desert theme table. Um, now, later on I learned about how you put gloss coat on before you um, do your shading. And I've seen pictures and I've seen tutorials on how to do that. And check that out if you haven't already. Put about, about putting a gloss coat on before you do your shading. Cause, and you can use like this stuff called white magic or something like that or some ghost or something. Um, you'll see those in the videos where you could take the ink off flat surfaces and all that. It's, the tanks and stuff look awesome. 
I didn't do that on these tanks because I didn't do it on my previous tank. So I wanted them to match. But if I go back in time, that would have done that. So also check that out. Put the gloss coat on before you put the inking. And when you get the tank all put together, the one I did, and this is the final result. But I would try the gloss coat before inking. And so that's how I do my camo.